Hello and welcome to the Chase Harris Basic Gaming Channel. Uh, as you guys know, if you've been watching my videos, uh, I've been playing a lot of Witcher 3, and uh, I thought that I would make a little tips and tricks uh, video for Gwent, which is quite possibly my favorite minigame ever. You know, it could be its own game. I, I would. I don't really play tabletop, but if I did, I would play this. Um, so I'm going to scroll through my hand here a couple times. Um, I'll explain what uh, all of these symbols and abilities mean uh, since this is a tips and tricks video. Um, so the my leader card, which is shown in the bottom left corner of the screen right under um, Geralt's name, um, can, it has an ability where if you hit X and then uh, enter during your turn, it'll pull the impenetrable fog card out of your deck, um, and that that uh, damages the strength stat of ranged cards. So I don't really like to have a lot of ranged cards in my hand, just in case I decide to um, just in case I decide that I need that. But that's just me. So I'm gonna lay my range card down as kind of cannon fodder here, just to just to see how the enemy reacts. And uh, he lays down. Uh, I call them spies. I'm not really sure if they're they're supposed to be called that. But what that does is um, you have to give the card to your enemy's battlefield to fight against you. But the catch is you get to draw two cards. So by doing that, by giving me that card, he drew two cards into his hand that I don't get to see. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab that dummy down there. I call them dummies. They're called decoys. Yeah, they're deco decoys. And I'm going to use it to uh, swap it out for the spy that he gave me. So now I have the spy, and I can play that later to get two cards. But, like I said, I'd have to give it to him. So he just used another spy, a second one. Um, so he gave me that power and used two cards. I mean, <laughs> and drew two cards. So now I'm, I'm just kind of um, prolonging this round. I want to see where it goes. At this point, um, I've made up my mind that I have to win this round. Um, that'll be the best case scenario for me, because he's given me he's given me power. He's obviously uh, trying to throw. Whenever you lay down these really... Uh, these are really powerful spies. Uh, they're giving me a lot of strength. Um, and by doing that, uh, I don't think he's going to be able to win this round, uh, or even wants to. Um, and that, that uh, war horn that he just used doubles the strength of all of the units on that row. So he played it on his siege row, and his siege equipment uh, strength was doubled. Um, so right now I'm trying to think of which card to lay down without uh, wasting anything. Might not have been the best decision on my part to lay down uh, my most powerful card, but I'll live because he just passed the round. Now that means I can lay as many cards down as I want to win. Luckily I was already ahead, so I just passed and won by default. Now because I'm in the Northern Realms, I get to draw a card for winning. That's my uh, faction bonus. The, that's the kind of deck that I'm using. There are four factions, the Scoia'tael, the Monsters, uh, the Nilfgaardian, and the Northern Realms. So I'm going to start off this round, uh, as you saw, by laying the Spy down. Uh, basically what I'm doing is just gaining strength. So I lay down that uh, the Lady <laughs> down there in the Siege equipment lets me draw a card out of my discard deck. So I laid it down over there, and I got to draw another two cards. So I just used two spies. Now what he's done is he's realized that I've, I've given him a lot of power. So he lays down another war horn, this time on the infantry row, doubling the power of uh, all those guys. There. And two of those guys there are ones that I just gave him. In retrospect, he gave them to me, and then I gave them right back. But now we have drawn the same amount of cards, except that I won the previous round and got to draw a card because of that. So I have actually drawn five cards, and he's only drawn four. So that gives me an advantage. Now, I pass because I realize I'm not going to win this round. I have a slight advantage because I have one more card than he does. 
and I'm just going to move right into the third round and give up <laughs> that second round to him. That, I, I knew that was coming, that's why I uh, wanted so badly to win the first round. Usually I'm not that aggressive on the first round, but uh, I made the exception because I saw all those spies on my side, and they're really powerful, so I knew if I was going to play them, I'd have to forfeit that round. So uh, here, uh, I'm going to play a card with the same ability as this lady, which gets to draw a card from the discard pile. Yeah, her. So now I get to draw a card from the discard pile, and I'm going to draw uh, this lady again. So I get to draw another card from the discard pile. They do chain. That ability chains. I actually didn't know that for sure until I played this hand. Um, I was just testing it out for the sake of testing it out, and what do you know, it worked. So if um, if you have this ability to chain it, I recommend it, because I'm pretty sure um, it allowed me to crush this guy this round. Um, by the way, when you see the strength is encircled in kind of a orange fiery kind of symbol, um, that means that you can't harm that uh, that unit with magic. Um, like the impenetrable fog card, or the um, or the or the rain card that hurts the siege equipment, uh, doesn't affect cards with um, that orangey fire around the strength rating. So here I'm just laying cards down, trying to build up my strength uh, so I can beat him. And he's doing a pretty good job of uh, staying ahead of me, but I've got an ace up my sleeve. I happen to have, um, I happen to have two environment cards. I call them environment cards. I don't know what you guys want to call them, but uh, the the snow there, the the ice storm that will hurt infantry, and the impenetrable fog card that will hurt um, ranged characters. But uh, they're really not going to be a part of my success. Um, see, I'm going to waste that ice card. That's actually hurting me more than it is him. But I'm just prolonging the game at this point. I'm playing shuffle around. So now I'm going to get rid of it. I'm just laying cards so that I, uh, he runs out of cards before I do. So he passes. And I'm going to play this card, which uh, if the power level of the in infantry row is equal to or greater than 10, I destroy the most powerful cards. Um, and then I laid the impenetrable fog down, which got rid of his insanely strong ranged row. It was just stupid strong, and that was enough to allow me to win. Now here I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit more about the um, the cards with the, the flaming orange around the strength rating. Now you'll notice I have a war horn in my hand, which I'm about to use, um, and I'll place it in my ranged row, but you'll notice that only the non flamey strength person was uh, uh, had their strength double. Uh, no magic affects the person with the orange flames around their uh, around the strength rating. <clears throat> Not even the environmental effects, like the impenetrable fog, doesn't do anything. Neither does the war horn. Uh, neither would magical abilities of other cards to destroy it. Nothing affects them. Thank you for watching my Gwent tips and tricks guide. I never thought I would make a strategy guide for anything, but I think the main takeaway from this, it's not all encompassing, but it is really cool to know that you can chain those um, draw from your discard pile abilities. Um, so yeah, I didn't even know that until I played that end, so that was, that was pretty awesome that I was able to uh, record it. Not intentional, but it worked out really well, didn't it? Alright, thank you for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. What did they spell? 
Radovid sucks flaccid cock. Me.